Hello everyone. Today in this video we are going to learn about mesh analysis. So this is very important topic in electrical circuit analysis. Okay, so there are some systematic procedural steps to apply mesh analysis for a given particular network. The first step is we need to verify whether the given network is planar or non-planar that we need to identify. Okay, so I will uh, try to explain this point using a simple electrical network like this, a battery and some couple of, uh, you know, resistors. Okay, so this particular network won't have any crossovers. So if we don't observe any crossover, then that particular network will be treated as a planar network. Okay, so let us uh, have uh, one more element or one more resistor like this and one more resistor like this. Okay. So let us name this resistance as R1, this resistance as R2, this node, this particular node is X and this particular node is Y. Okay. Right. So now, what do you mean by this crossover? This crossover means, um, you know, so this crossover means it is not having any interaction. It means R1. R1 is not having any interaction with R2, but is connected between X and Y. So that is the meaning. So if we observe any crossover, we can treat that particular network as a non-planar. Now you observe and tell me whether this network is planar or non-planar. I would say this is a planar network. So how can I say like that? So that means we need to look for the alternative. So this R1 is connected between X and Y. So if we connect this particular resistor R1 like this, can we get the crossover? So we are not getting the crossover. It means we need to verify the possibilities. So still we are getting the crossover, then we can treat that particular network as a non-planar. Otherwise, if you check for the alternatives and you have not found any crossover, then it will be treated as a planar network. Okay, so I hope uh, this point was clear for everyone. Okay, so the second step is to identify number of meshes. Okay, so number of meshes. So you may count it as one, two, and so on. You may count them. And the third step is, uh, you know, uh, you assume current directions. Okay, so we need to assume current directions. If your problem is given with the current directions, then you have to uh, follow the given directions. Otherwise, you can choose your own directions. Okay, now those currents will be called as mesh currents or loop currents. Now, fourth step is, after assuming the current directions, for each mesh, we need to apply KVL, that is Kirchhoff's voltage law. So, once we apply this KVL, we will be getting equations. Those equations are called mesh equations. Okay? So, mesh equations or voltage equations we may get. So, these mesh equations will be in terms of mesh currents. Okay, so will be in terms of mesh currents. Once we solve this mesh currents, you will be getting mesh currents. Okay, so once we solve this mesh equations, we will get mesh currents. So let us assume the mesh currents as I1, I2 like that. You will be getting the mesh currents. How many meshes that you have? Those many mesh currents you may get. Now, once we got the currents and uh, mesh currents, we can find the current in any element of a given network. Once we got uh, the current in any element and we were already aware of the amount of impedance or resistance, then we can calculate voltage drops across any element. Once we are aware of current and voltage across any element, uh, we may find power dissipations also. So, in this way, we can understand the mesh analysis. Okay, so uh, I'll be explaining this mesh analysis 
using one simple problem then it will be very easy to remember the concept entire concept but uh, i would uh, tell you that uh, you you try to solve more problems so if you practice uh, different kinds of uh, uh, problems then automatically the concept will be hidden there in your mind whenever you want you'll be getting okay so now let us have a simple uh, example okay so i'll be taking uh, a very very simple one okay so this is 1 volt battery this is 2 ohm resistor next uh, 3 ohm resistor next 4 ohm and 5 ohm so here what is the first step that we need to identify whether the given network is planar or non-planar so so by simple observation only we can say that the given network is a planar network okay so now what you need to do you have to identify the number of meshes okay so here is the first mesh or first loop and this is the second mesh and third step you need to identify the current directions for each loop so since this problem is not given with the direction that you need to assume the loop currents so here i am assuming the current directions like this so since this is mesh one call it as i1 since it is mesh 2 call it as i2 like this okay now next point is you have to uh, you know apply kvl for each mesh so first go with mesh 1 okay so apply kvl okay so always you start the element which is next to your supply then it will be easy for you now voltage across 2 ohm resistor plus voltage across 3 ohm resistor plus of minus 1 volt equal to 0. Okay. So according to the current direction I am writing. You always know that the current always flows from higher to lower potential like this. Okay. So according to this I1 direction the polarities will be like this. Okay. Now uh, we all know ohms law. V equal to IR is the formula. Okay, so 2 ohm is the resistance, I1 is the current through the resistor, then automatically voltage across 2 ohm will be 2 I1 plus voltage across 3 ohm. So here we need to identify that first we write 3. Okay, so resistance, this part R is over. Now we concentrate on I because 3 ohm is common for mesh 1 and mesh 2. Okay, so 3 into, since you are writing for mesh 1, I1 is your reference direction, right? So it can't be negative. Now, at this particular moment, I1 is flowing from I1 is flowing from top to bottom, and I2 is flowing from bottom to top, like this. So that means they are opposite in directions. So that's why I2 is opposite to I1. So that's why you have to take minus. So minus I2 equal to one. You may turn this minus 1 to other side you'll be getting plus 1 so if you solve you'll be getting 5 i1 minus 3 i2 equal to 1 so this is our first equation now go for mesh 2 so here you need to apply again kvl okay so according to the current direction i2 we are writing the mesh 2 equation so firstly voltage across 4 ohm resistor plus voltage across 5 ohm resistor no element is there so plus voltage across 3 ohm resistor equal to 0 now current flowing through 4 ohm is i2 so resistance is 4 so voltage drop will be 4 i2 so here also like in the same case so i2 is the current so 5 i2 plus this 3 is common for both mesh 1 and mesh 2 and now you are taking I2 as your reference direction. So keep I2 as a positive value. It can't be negative. Reference current can't be negative. Okay. So how I1 is acting? So it is acting in opposite direction. So it can be taken as minus I1 equal to 0. So if we simplify, then we'll be getting minus 3 I1 plus 5, 4, 9, 9, 3, 12. So 12 I2 equal to 0. You'll be getting equation 
so after so after getting these two equations you can solve equations 1 and 2 so once you solve you'll be getting the values for i1 and i2 so once you got the values for i1 i2 if i ask you to calculate the current flowing through 2 ohm resistor it would be simply i1 right you can observe so here i1 you may calculate so similarly what is the current flowing through 4 ohm resistor is i2 and also is the current flowing through 5 ohm resistor okay now if i ask you to calculate the current flowing through 3 ohm resistor from top to bottom then you observe i1 is flowing from top to bottom i2 is flowing from bottom to top so then automatically it will be i1 minus i2 so you are having loop currents so that you can calculate the currents in any elements okay so now once you got uh, the current uh, values of each and every elements okay so then if i ask you to calculate voltage across 2 ohm resistor it will be 2i1 you got value of i1 now voltage across 4 ohm resistor simply 4i1 voltage across 5 ohm resistor simply 5 sorry here i2 okay so here 5i2 if i ask you to calculate voltage across 3 ohm resistor like this plus to minus okay so from top to bottom then it will be i1 minus i2 into 3 clear so if i say not positive minus uh, ab let us say ab okay so let us assume this point as a this point as b so then i1 minus i2 into 3 so once i got the uh, voltage current values at each and every element we may calculate power also power dissipation you may take vi you may take i square r you may take v square by r it doesn't matter every value is known to you you may calculate power across or power dissipation at any element so in this way we can apply mesh analysis hope uh, this video help you in uh, solving different problems based on mesh analysis okay so in coming video i'll be with uh, super mesh analysis uh, and later nodal and super nodal analysis okay so thank you for uh, listening to this video and um, have a nice day thank you so much